Hallelujah. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. We're grateful to our most high Elohim for his goodness, his mercy, his loving kindness. Out of his love and mercy, he has been speaking to us on spiritual gifts, what they are and how they operate. And the whole idea is that the Lord has said it's because of a wrong perspective of ministry. And the Lord says that organizational model that the church has been riding on is will lead to nowhere. It is not his church. It's not his body. His church is his body and his bride. And the connotation of the church is that of an organic entity, different body parts, different cells, each of them functioning. And it is through spiritual gifts that we all ought to minister to one another. When we're using our spiritual gifts, we're ministering to the Lord and we're ministering to one another because the gifts are not given to you for yourself. We are stewards of the manifold grace of God. The gifts are for us to steward, use it to serve other people. And so, brothers and sisters, we've looked at seven root gifts for us to serve, indicating who we are going to be in the kingdom in Romans chapter 12, from verse 4 to 8. Then in the previous lesson, immediately previous lesson to this one, we looked at the nine enabling gifts that are articulated in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, from verse 4 to 10. And now we're going to go into what is called the other gifts. There are four main tranches of gifts. One are those root gifts. Number two, the enabling gifts. Number three, the other gifts. The four, the fivefold gifts. When you put it all together, you see the glorious picture of the church, the way the Lord wanted it to be. And today, what do we have? Local assemblies that are just theaters across the world. Churches that are theaters. And the Lord said, no. We got to get back to the organic reality that by what every joy supplies, the body makes increase of itself in love. You supply through your gifting. If you don't know your gifting, you cannot function. If you know your gifting, then necessity is upon you to ensure that you release it to serve other people because the gift is given to you to profit with all. As we're told in First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And so, brothers and sisters, it is important, therefore, that we know the truth that sets free, which is what the Lord wants to bring us into in this cause. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to posture before you to receive what you say in the now. Lord, have your way and continue to feed us until we want no more. In Yeshua's name, amen. And Holy Spirit, we depend on you entirely to bring this whole truth together and feed us and enable us to understand and let the organic church arise worldwide. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Brothers and sisters, let's look at the other gifts in this lesson. We're going to look at a number of them. Now, we've had seven <clears throat> at the beginning. Then we had nine, which is 16. And you can say, okay, prophecy was mentioned twice in Romans and in Corinthians. Well, simple. The root gift says who you will be. If you have the gift of prophecy, it shows that that's the direction of law for you. And yet you are not a prophet in the root gift. Then the root, the, the enabling gift in First Corinthians 12 has to do with what you receive when the Holy Spirit came upon you. There are some people he comes upon, he gives them a prophetic mantle. And that prophetic mantle gives you a cutting edge in exercise of your ministry. So if we put together 16 already this course, number 17 today helps. Then, brethren, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, towards the end, it began to mention the gifts and it talks about helps. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And Elohim has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then the gifts of healings, helps, governments, 
diversities of tongues. Now we're going to leave that of apostles, prophets, teachers aside when we're going to discuss the fivefold. Then if it is after that miracles and the gifts of healings, often evangelists excise these two more than others. But let's now go on to pick on those that are mentioned here. Talks about helps and governance, diversities of tongues. We have looked at tongues as a gift. So helps. What is the gift of helps? There's a gift that enables you to graciously support another person who the Lord has given a vision to fulfill that vision. Ben and brethren, this is so important. This is, it sounds simple, but this, this is one of the most strategic gifts. The ability to joyfully come alongside somebody. The Lord has given a primary gift and you take your place and do all the work that is needed to be done to make it work. And you are not seeking to take credit. You actually point people to the leader with the vision. And this is something that you cannot just do. You have to have the ability to be a true servant leader. As Yeshua said in the book of, demonstrated in the book of John 17, 1 to 7, John 13, 1 to 7, and in Matthew 20, 25 to 28, you know, telling us that service is the heart of the kingdom. So those who are, who have this gift of helps in order to be able to function, they are often dead to self. It is that death of self that enables them to embrace a vision the Lord gives to somebody and take it as if it's their own. They buy into the vision. They run with the vision. They are committed to Elohim. They are committed to the vision. They are committed to the vision holder. And they are that faithfulness it makes them uncommon. And any ministry that is blessed with many people in the gift of helps will enjoy unprecedented growth. Why? reason is that as those who with the gift of help take their place around the vision holder, the vision holder can concentrate on the main thing, the main thing for which the work was given. Brothers and sisters, it's so important that we know that in, in the time of Yeshua, he enjoyed the gift of helps. The disciples were first in the office of helps. The gift of helps was what they were functioning. And then Luke 8, 1 to 3, we are told about the woman who came alongside Yeshua and ministered to him out of their substances. Even in that great vessel of the Lord called Fubi, the deaconess of Priscilla and Aquila, Ephesus, Mary, some of those people who served with Paul in the book of Romans chapter 16, they were in the capacity of help. They, they were functioning their helps gifting. Brothers, it's so important that we know that even the first church, the first century church, that's what happened to the deacons that were selected in Acts chapter 6. The apostles discovered, look, we're spending so much time on distributing food. Let's look for those with the capacity, with the grace to serve while we concentrate. So what it means, therefore, is for someone to serve as a deacon or deaconess, someone to serve in most of the offices in the churches, this gift will make them stand out very well. In that same First Corinthians 12, verse 28, we see another gift called government. It says, in that place, God has set some in the body. First, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, after that miracles, the gifts of healings, which we said, evangelism. Then it says, helps. Then it mentions government. Government. Governments, we need to take note of these two things. This is different from the gift of ruling, mentioned in Romans chapter 12. Roman ruling has to do with leadership. Governments have to do with administration, administrative giftings. Men and brethren, it's so important to know that government is the kind of gifting given to those who can look at micro issues. You see, the rulers the, or leaders, they have the, mic, the macro vision, the overall vision, the strategic vision. But there are people who are gifted to have the ability to look at the small T's, make sure the T's are across, the I's are dotted. And this gift of administration enables you to 
see the smaller details and make sure all things are done well. And that's why this is the gift that enables people to serve well as administrators of churches, of ministries, secretaries, executive and personal assistants. What they need is this gift of government. Where they operate, they enable the work to be made so easy for the primary leader and they don't have to struggle. Then number 20 is the gift of celibacy. Yeshua was the first to mention this gift in Matthew 19, 10. Disciples said unto him, If the case of a man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. If a man cannot cast out his wife, divorce his wife, whenever he wants, it is not good to marry. Verse 11, Yeshua said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. They are not able to do the things that humans do as male and female. And then he said, there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. That is to say, people made them eunuchs so that they won't mess up like the utopia eunuch. What does it mean? These are people who are employed to serve in the palace of the queen and so that they don't get into any problem of, you know, desiring you know to violate the person they are to serve they allow themselves to be castrated and they lose the capacity to be able to do anything anyhow so these are people made eunuchs by men then he says and they are being eunuchs the third category which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake he that is able to receive it let him receive it this is those who receive the gifting and excise it it's called the gift of celibacy. That was the secret of Paul's great ministry. Paul opted out of marriage, out of issue, having to do with child care and other things. He didn't want any distractions so that he can fulfill the purpose of the Lord for his life. It's a gifting. It's an ability. And that's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he would look and say, listen, I wish people were like me so that the work of the Lord would be done because there's trouble coming. And so it's a gifting. You got it, you got it. You don't have it, you don't have it. So when a particular church, you know, need, we don't need to mention the name, impose it upon their people. You need to go to the history of the imposition. When people died, their family members claimed the houses, the personages. And the church struck up an idea. If you want to be a, 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 a priest, you want to be a bishop, you've got to be celibate. So there's no question of our sharing anything with family members. And you know what? It became a mess. And it has been a mess till today. Priests who are messing up behind closed doors. Why? Because they, they are not celibate, spiritually speaking. They don't have the gift. They have the calling is imposed upon them. And in order to please the, the, the leaders, they, they go and take the yoke, so to say, outwardly, but celibacy is not there. So it's a gift. People have it. They're not going to desire any relationship with the opposite gender, you know, as men and women have. No. They're just going to be straight-eyed doing the work of the Lord. Number 21, hospitality. You see, Christians are supposed to be hospitable people who open their homes for people to come in. But in reality, Christians are not as hospitable as they ought to. So the gift of hospitality enables those who are blessed to operate at the level of the church. They are so zealous in opening their homes for people to come in. You know, if church where they are part of are visiting ministers, they don't need to go to look for hotels because they will keep a place open. And if they are empty nesters, they keep some rooms, leave them open and say that if visitors come, let them come and stay there, pass their place in their place. They are not going to make people uncomfortable by being too picky or too fastidious or too, you know, trying to show. No, they are not going to feel oh, anybody is stepping on their red wine carpet or whatever. They just have that joy, that joyful Open, receiving people into their homes and minister to them, refresh them, and they go on their journey. Men and brothers are people in the Bible. You know, in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 15, Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, 
you know, the house of Stephanas, that is the first fruit of a care, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They were addicted to the ministry of the saints that you submit yourself to the household of faith, that you submit yourself to such, to everyone that helpeth with us and labor it. He said, these are the kind of people, submit to them. They have no agenda. They just want to receive people joyfully, share what they have. It's not about having money. It's about an attitude of life. A desire to be a blessing to others. Number 22 is missionary. You know, men and brethren, this gift is also implied. There is a supernatural grace to easily fit into and function in cultures other than the familiar. The ability to go to different places is contingent on the Great Commission, Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Brothers and sisters, that ability to go to these four realms of the Great Commission, and wherever you go, you feel at home, you just acculturate, you don't want to stand out like a sore thumb, they wear a particular type of dress, you're able to wear it, you eat a particular food, you want to eat it, and that is something that the grace is not in everybody, it's only few people, men and brethren, it's so important to know, that when you go to a land, those who are true missionaries, not only do you, like Paul said, do what, you know, try to live like them, so you don't stick out, also, they focus on ensuring that sinners are genuinely converted rather than mere churchgoers. Secondly, through the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm, the disciple train and mentor indigenes who are empowered to reproduce. And even if they have to go suddenly or government policy changes, the whole work does not crash because there are people to take in. And then they walk in the grace that Paul exhibited, which enabled him to reach many people as many people as possible. First Corinthians 9, 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant upon, upon, unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to Elohim, but under the law to Yeshua, that I may gain them that are without the law. Also in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of Elohim, Give non, giving none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of Yeshua, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. So this gift of missionary, those who have it, they can fit in many places, anywhere. They fit in, in other locations, because of that grace inside of them. That grace, not everybody has that grace. So, brothers and sisters, you know what? This course, we just want to impact and show you, look, right now we have gone to what point? 22 gifts in the body. And can you imagine there are many more left? By the time we finish, we will bring it to about 30 something. And the Lord say, hey, where, where did we get this? How many gifts are there? Nine gifts. Where did you get that? Somebody, three, four hundred years ago, according to the degree of light he had, he chanced upon 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 4 to 10, and he just picked those words, ran with it, preached it, and before you know it, everybody took it. And then in the laziness of the church, we're not asking ourselves, is that all? Brothers and sisters, there is much more. And what the Lord is doing is show us these things so that we can all know that the body, that's why the Lord will never for, make us forget that his calling is to his body. The gifting is for the body. It's all for bodily expression. Organic church, not organizational church, not a pyramid. 
somebody sit up there and others are down here. No, we are body. You have something to offer. Discover it and release it. Somebody has something to offer. Discover and release. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 and 11 says, As everyone has received the gift, so minister ye one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified to Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We need to receive it. We need to accept it. There are other things the Lord has given to us. For instance, number 23, intercession. Brothers sisters, every saint is called to pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Yet, there are people who have the gifting to stand in the gap for other people for a single period of time. Other brethren, their family members, the leaders in the church, other leaders, the work of the Lord, they stand in the gap. It's their life. It's their bread. It's their food. They, they, they breathe it. They, they talk it. It's all they do. And you know, the funny, the interesting thing is that Elohim himself made the call for, you know, uh, um, intercessors in Ezekiel 22, 30. And I sought for a man among them. Elohim said, I sought that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. Unfortunately, say I found none. You see, intercessors, two intercessors are hard to come by. They are not easy. They are not cheap people because these are people who are serious. Their transaction is with heaven. Jeremiah 5 verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man. If there be any that executed judgment and seeketh the truth and I will pardon it. If I can only find one, one person, I can pardon a community because of that one. And in, the book, in Genesis chapter 18, we see that Elohim found a persistent intercessor in Abraham leading to deliverance of Lord his nephew. He stood in the gap. He kept asking God, far be it from you. Will you allow the, parents, the righteous to perish with the sinners? No, that's not you, Father. He kept interceding, pleading the cause until he secured the life of Lord and his family. In the book of Luke 2, 36 to 37, we see that great woman of God, prophet Anna, she enjoyed only seven years of marriage before she was widowed. And all the rest of the years, she devoted to intercession. Intercession for the visitation of Elohim until she was 84. Can you imagine how many years praying? And the Lord answered her. She saw the Messiah, held the Messiah, and it was a glorious, wonderful thing. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying to us, let's stop being lazy. There is much more to the gospel. What are your gifts? If all these 23 we have mentioned so far, there must be one, two, three, four, five the Lord has given to you. Stop looking for office title. Look for your gifting. Function in your gifting. We don't need titles to function in your gifting. We just need to discover the gift. Give yourself over. The Holy Spirit who put it in you will also bring it forth for the benefit of other people, for the profit of other people. So by way of assignment, number one, what new spiritual gifts did you learn about today? Two, which of these spiritual gifts are manifested in your life? I want to encourage you, share this truth. Let the body of Yeshua get to know this truth. There's so much politicking and power, hungriness, and people tearing up to study at this and that. No, you can stay faithful in the church. Where the Lord planted you, just discover your gift and use it to serve others and others receive from others. And by whatever joint supplies, the body makes a crease of itself in love. The church becomes strong and powerful. And when unbelievers come, they can feel Yeshua through the various giftings that are manifested in people. Let's pray. Gracious Elohim, the I am who I am, we thank you for the opportunity to receive your word. We ask you that that which you have released to us, let it penetrate into the depth of our being. 
Let there be transformation. Let there be renewal. Let your grace be sufficient. Father, let there be fruit, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold to your own praise and glory. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen.